Call me. Uh, I need approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda and can we bring up number eight, uh, Sheriff Watts, as long as the uh, uh, K9 is here and then they can, they can all get on with their uh, routine. Right up to where? <laughs> uh, right after. Uh, we have public comments. Public comments, yeah. Okay. Between four and five. Uh, motion made the second moon on grade up uh, between four and five. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Approval of the minutes of September 5th. Make a motion to approve the minutes of September 5th. And second. Motion made and second approve the minutes from September 5th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Receipt of information from supervisors not seated as committee members. As we move on past that, we go to public comment. Any public comment? Hearing none, we will hear from Sheriff Walk and the and our canine, thank you. Yes, a couple months ago, I think it was Supervisor Rowdy asked if we could introduce our newest canine. So right. the schedule finally worked out and Josh is here today. So I'll just have Josh come up and he can talk. His, his canine's name is Bane. And Bane has already got three apprehensions, which in our county doesn't happen a lot, but it has ironically for Josh here. So it's Josh very experienced in a quick amount of time. Yeah, so this is canine Bane. He's uh, just turned two years old yesterday. I got him in last November. We went through St. Paul's school, 16 weeks. Um, this is my second dog, so it's a little bit different having a dog and like having trying to live up to those expectations, but he's surpassed it already. Um, he's from Hungary. Uh, he came over. He's a Belgian Malinois German Shepherd mix. They try and breed them together, try and get rid of some of the issues that German Shepherds have. Uh, we got through St. Paul Police uh, Canine School in the end. Come here, down. In the end of May, went on the street uh, June first, June second. I had my first apprehension. Um, since then, I mean, drugs, you guys, as you know, they run rampant in our county. This dog's certified in methamphetamine, heroin, crack, cocaine, MDMA, and fentanyl. Fentanyl's been huge for us lately. Um, he's had plenty of street, uh, sniffs where we're getting dope off the streets. We've had three apprehensions. I mean, the, the latest one that we've had was a guy who unfortunately tried to kill a guy twice, once with a gun and once with a car. Um, and these dogs that we bring into these situations, I 100% think the presence alone does a lot. I mean, they're a little bit intimidating once you hear them barking and once you hear those canine announcements, but the biggest thing with us and the biggest thing that I've seen in five years of doing canine is these dogs make sure our deputies make it home safe. They make sure that the people that we're dealing with also make it home safe. And we're putting these dogs into situations that it'd be really hard for a deputy to step into. And if we didn't have these dogs, a deputy would have to step into. So whether that be using force on these people, whether that be not making it home, that's what these dogs are for. These dogs are for the aspect of making sure every one of us make it home safe. And with these dogs, they're so good with their switch. I, I'm sure some of you guys remember probably Steve Smith dogs back in the day where you couldn't get close to a squad. That's not these dogs. These dogs can go from someone coming in this room and he, him apprehending them to me outing him and going around and he could be pet by every single one of you guys. So I just wanna say thank you guys a lot for your support. We wouldn't have these dogs without you guys. We wouldn't have the big support that we have, especially with you guys in our community. We love coming around. We love giving demos. We love being out and about. So make sure that if you guys ever see us around, feel free to ask, hey, can you guys come out and do a demo, do, do something? I'm always available. I'm always making myself available for the community. But again, thank you guys for your support. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time because I could talk all day, but I'll get out of mm -hmm. you guys unless you have any questions. You could talk all day, but you do in a hurry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yep, no problem. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? I'm not on the committee, but I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. So do you have like a bulletproof vest for him if you were going into something super dangerous? So we have one on order now. Um, so it's been on order for a while because they take a while to make because they're custom fit to the dogs. But uh, so we just got one on order. So that way these dogs put in these dangerous situations. I mean, I've had him for four months and he's been in three situations that no deputy or police officer really wants to go into. We will, but because of this dog, we don't have to. 
We don't have to stick our head around that corner and look for a gun. We don't have to go on to somebody who just tried to kill somebody twice. We're able to use these dogs to make sure that we're able to get home safe and make sure that every one of our deputies are able to get home safe. And one thing that gets brought up a lot is, oh, how many apprehensions do you have? How many of this do you have? I don't like to count that kind of stuff a lot. What I like to count is how many times my partners get to go home safe, see their families, and I get to see them. So that's why these dogs are here. Um, we got one on order, should be here within the next 30 days. But yeah, these, I mean, I, like I said, I could talk all day. These dogs are amazing. They're the biggest tool that we have in this county. And I'm a little biased because this is my second dog, but I'd take this over anything else in this county. We're able to put these dogs into so many circumstances. I mean, we tracked a 15 year old kid that was lost out in the woods for five and a half hours one morning. It's, these dogs are used for so many things. They're a locating tool first before they're anything else. So again, thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for having us here. And I appreciate just the chance to come talk to you guys a little bit. Hey, good girl. Oh, we do. Let's talk to the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's a on, buddy. beautiful dog, yeah. <laughs> the, the dogs are so obedient. Uh, watch the St. Paul canine class that just graduated. It's amazing. Every time I go to those graduations, they, they've taken it up another notch just with their training ability and their obedience. So like he mentioned, it used to be you didn't want to get near a police dog. They'd take your arm off. Now we can have kids pet that dog. And then two minutes later, you could send them on a, on a track and it's all business. So, so it's like but how many dogs was in that graduating class? Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. It was the first time they ever let DNR dogs through. They had two DNR dogs that were trained to sniff out zebra muff, zebra muscles. <laughs> it really made me laugh when I look at the quality of our dog and they got dogs, <laughs> zebra muscles. So, Oh, there's a question that came from the outside. If, there's fentanyl, would you give a dog Narcan? Um, I guess I'm not certain on that. Uh, that would have been good for Josh to answer that because okay. they're trained in they're trained in detecting fentanyl. Right. Yes, if they can, came into contact with they it. They say you can give the fentanyl it's the same stuff we have for people. The Narcan stuff. The dogs. Okay. No. So I, I passed out just last week. We had our now Humane Society reach out to us. They did a back the badge event in July and saved a portion of their adoption fees. And they made a $500 donation to us to go to the canine program. And it is things like the vest you mentioned, and we'll make sure that we get that money spent on the dogs themselves. And um, again, it is a great tool for us. It is really beneficial. And in the world of narcotics detection, um, that's, that's as good as it gets. Josh makes a felony case just about every time he works or a drug arrest about every time he works. He's always out there getting it. We do have a second dog. So that's why Josh came in today. The second dog is on his days off. That dog is Odin and uh, his handler is Adam Gehring. And they're, they're, we're very blessed to have two world-class canines. So thanks again for the support. Um, for the last several months, we've had a population of over 100 in the jail. So we're back to what I would say is normal. You know, during COVID, we dipped down to 30 to 40 inmates. So we're back up to that, what we expect to see around 100. That's typically what is business as usual for us. So we're back to that. We are full staff in the jail and in dispatch. And we've been, knock on wood, we've been full staff for a while now. So I like that trend. We're still two positions down in patrol, which is a stress because we're um, two positions down hurts us a lot on patrol. But we're working at filling those. There's just a lack of qualified candidates. So we've had a couple processes go through and we just haven't been able to fill. I just did a press release and we're doing a news story today about our construction site burglaries. We've had a rash of these where someone's building a new home. You know, everyone puts their construction under construction signs. Well, that's been the dinner bell for thieves. And we've had trailers stolen, tools stolen. Uh, it's been going on for a couple months. So we did a kind of a public service announcement this week that went out to the local media and Eau Claire media picked up on it. So the investigator is going to do a, an interview today to talk a little more about it. But we really want people to lock their stuff up, utilize technology like trail cams and have the trail cams position where they'll actually capture something. That's been the problem when there's been a trail cam on a job site. It's a grainy picture in the dark of a car. We can't even really, we can't get specific details. So that's kind of what's been going on. Um, 
obviously we're heavy into the budget right now and under Joe Biden's America, the, the operating costs have went way up. You know, fuel costs, fuel costs are up. Squad cars for the same car we bought three years ago is now 50 grand. They've doubled in price. Uh, pickup trucks that we paid 25,000 for in 2020 are now $50,000. So it's, it's very difficult to work the budget when everything has went up so, so much in cost. Uh, we anticipate costs will continue to rise. You know, the, the auto workers are on strike, so that's going to have an impact on the supply of vehicles. So we're, we're concerned about that. Um, the food contract for the jail, um, you know, that we're entering negotiations on that. So we'll be meeting with Summit Foods and the cost of food has gone up. So we had to rene renegotiate that contract. I think it was 35%. That went up and it could go up further. So... Just to let you know, we're trying to pinch every penny we have, but ultimately we're getting just slammed with the cost of public safety. It's it's expensive. We need squad cars, we need fuel, and we need to feed and <coughs> take care of our inmates. So that is expensive. Um, I just want to point out too that we desperately need that additional security position and the additional dispatcher. That That is a must have for us. So any other questions? Oh, I will also mention it's been a terrible year for highway traffic safety deaths. Uh, we had our 12th fatality. Um, that was from a motorcycle accident that happened way back on September 8th, but the person did succumb to his injuries after a couple weeks in the hospital. So I had to update a press release last week on that. But, you know, we averaged uh, 10 deaths per year. And we've been fortunate because we've had some years with only four. And I think last year we had seven. But this year we're up to a pretty high number. And, you know, we'll study the data. We'll, we'll see if there's any trends we can learn. We do have regular highway safety meetings with state officials and we look at the data. So um, I haven't petitioned yet to have highway renamed the highway of death, but um, it's kind of looking like that this year. It's, it's been a bad, you know, I think we've had six fatalities on highway. Eight. Was that last fatality down on Southern Polk 135? How did that one turn out? Uh, I haven't officially heard on that one. That could yet actually be a, another one if, if, but the state patrol wrote that one and I haven't heard that was the motorcycle versus yep. truck. Yep. So I haven't heard from an official source yet on that, but we did have one on this on September 12th, which was newer than that one. And it was a single operator on a motorcycle that went off a curve. And after a couple of weeks in the hospital, he succumbed to his injuries. So it's, it's devastating for the community. You know, one is too many. You know, these numbers are just numbers, but honestly, there's a sad story and a grieving family connected to every single one of them. So um, it's, it's, it's a hard part of the job. It's hard on our staff to go see that. You know, our staff is regularly going to these type of calls. And it's, so we do pay a close attention to the wellness of our employees as well. Any questions? <clears throat> Hard to top the dog, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of a letdown. How long is your term? Four years. Three more years in, in three months. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> <laughs> and that should be my last term. That's the plan. Um. <laughs> should be my last term. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Number six, Administrator Netherland. Yeah, just a few things that you might be interested in. The Stour update, I think uh, very good news from uh, the ruling in Judge Flack's court where he put a stay on the decision he made, meaning that the horses are allowed on the Stour this season. So it's open today and uh, is open until the start of hunting season, which is mid-November, right? Uh, so that's good news. We've uh, just put a press release out to the newspapers and we also put it on our website. And so we've let people know about that. Uh, regarding trails, Bob Kazmierski, if you have not heard, is resigning from the county. He's taking a job in Barron County to be the director of uh, the housing authority. And uh, so we are working diligently to replace him and reorganize that group a little bit. Um, I just received, I know you met with the ATV council. We just received in the mail, uh, 
or email uh, a request from the Snowmobile ATV Council uh, for $102,000 uh, to pay for a fourth track machine or a groomer that's on tracks. Uh, just so you know, it, it, it's traditionally we don't do that. You buy equipment for outside agencies and then every agency says, hey, we need equipment. And they get state funds plus the fact that it just came to place. So, you know, I'm, I'm as, a, as the administrator, that may be something you guys decide later, but my, my position is it's probably not going to happen this year. So from, from my butt. Um, we also received a letter from the fair board. If you have not seen it yet, uh, the fair board kind of gave their reply. Uh, and I just got it today as well, basically stating their position, which the one thing that stood out is they want a, an unending uh, MOU saying that they have longer contracts. Uh, so as we, you know, at least they staked a position and they made some comments. So maybe there'll be an opportunity where we can uh, receive some dialogue from them or uh, maybe better yet, they would sign the MOU, which is available to them. So that's what I have for now. Any questions at all? So when's that Bob Kazmierski's effective date? November 13th. Thank you for asking. Soon. Pardon? Yeah, that's pretty soon. Well, that's longer than normal. Bob was very, uh, he, he's on vacation for two and a half weeks right now. And he, he asked before he took this job if he could, you know, take some extra time to kind of close up some. Oh, things. yeah. So that gives us a little time to reorganize some uh, assignments uh, to get the recruiting going. And, uh, so we're actively doing that already. So may I ask you who is kind of the go-to person in the zoning department? Well, Bob still is, even though he's on vacation. But in zoning, we've got our, you know, Logan, Cara, and Winter. Uh, we've got a planner down there. But the person who is, is kind of stepping in to say, hey, bring any issues to me uh, is Steve. Uh, Geiger. Steve Geiger. Yeah. I gave Bob's name to uh, five different people this morning. Apparently, there's a contract signed on 230th in Farmington to build a uh, cell tower. And there was a Farmington Town board meeting last night. They didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. I got half a dozen calls this morning and I told them that as far as I knew, they'd have to call the zoning office. And I thought that I, I mentioned Bob Kazmierski's name. I, as far as I knew, he was the acting person. Yes, he still is. Now, Steve Geiger deals a lot with uh, towers as well. I know I've, he's been communicating. He copies me on his communication. Thanks so much for that information. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, Mr. Norby, you're up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, score a few projects and status of the last month and oh, it works. Clam Falls Dam drawdown has started. Um, as of Monday, we're down five feet. We still have another five feet to go on that. Um, during that, also, uh, DNR has uh, mandated that we do a muscle survey and relocation of muscles on the flowage. Um, so we have volunteers working with Bob's staff um, on walking the flowage. Right now, um, I have some pictures in your, your packet for you. I'll go over in a minute here uh, with that. As of to date, they've collected uh, 1,977 clams they relocated so far. So that's going on pretty well. Uh, the plans for the dam replacement, they have been submitted to DNR uh, September 29th. Uh, so they're in there for DNR's review. So we're still anticipating uh, approval within 60 days and being able to go out for bid late December and January for the replacement of that project on their uh, 
Uh, Vince mentioned the Stour um, stay for the horses. Uh, the DD Kennedy restrooms, uh, we did get those craned in and, and installed. Uh, we're working on getting them hooked up now with the utilities. Uh, there is a wedding this weekend. We're really hoping to get a well guy out there to get the final hookups out there for the wedding um, out there. Otherwise, uh, the bride's not very happy with the porta potty situation <laughs> out there now. So uh, the ATV intensive use part, uh, staking is scheduled for the end of October to stake out the, the trail, the facilities, and the fence lines. <coughs> at, um, this time of year, the next few weeks, we'll start looking at removing docks winterizing areas. Uh, we did do some more FECON work cleaning up in the summer's trail area and that camping area for the, the horses and that that's been done. Uh, County Road F and Amory from 46 to the golf course there. We're currently milling that today. That'll be paved back Thursday. It should be our last paving project. And then we have two milling projects in the uh, city of St. Croix Falls. On Main Street there, we have two blocks there we're milling and paving, and then a chunk in uh, Luck on 48 that, that will get done this week. The County Road B project from Z to uh, 35, the public information meeting is scheduled for October 25th from 6 o'clock to 7 p.m. at the Cushing Community Center. For any, any public that wants to know about that project, the notice will be in the paper here shortly. Bridge on County K, they poured the one abutment. Uh, Rain has held them up on the second one, so they're they're still going through with that. Uh, Detour is on County F on that one. County F from State Highway 65 to View Lane. We're in the final estimates for that for change management for additional funding on that. Uh, narrowing down the specifics of that project. The Justice Center roof. Uh, we've been waiting for the last bit of flashing to come up there. You notice the white on the edge of the building up there. The flashing came in this week. So uh, that company should be installing that um, starting to this week, getting that done there. Also in the Justice Center, we had um, some water tested done on all our facilities. The water in the uh, Justice Center came back with, um, one tap came back with high copper levels in it elevated. Uh, so we ended up placing the entire uh, building on bottled water, including the jail and the um, uh, kitchen, kitchen there where they cook the jail food. Uh, we did supplemental testing on that, uh, eliminated the jail and dispatch, was cleared. Um, our final testing came back after we flushed the lines. Uh, they came back very low. They came back within standards, almost to a minimum, where we had levels at 1,300. Uh, the levels now came back to 92. And what the cause of that was, leaching in there, we found that we have uh, dead-end copper lines for the hose bibs on the building that probably have never been used since the building was built in 2002. Once we flushed those out, uh, the levels drop. So we're also replacing the aerators and all the sinks. And once those are done, we'll, um, we'll give the notice to everyone that the water is all right to drink. But it was just elevated copper levels from those dead end lines that haven't been flushed. And they'll go on a uh, quarterly or um, quarterly, quarterly uh, flushing schedule you know, just to make sure that we keep water in the facility. Justice Center project here, uh, the energy emergency generator is online and the switch gear is in. That's done. We are down to punch list items on it. Uh, we're right now trending. I haven't got the last payment in. We're running about 3% over budget, uh, about 246,000 to 250,000. Uh, majority of that cost is from the state inspector. His, his requirements every time he visited us on that uh, caused that along with uh, a little more asbestos than we thought in the project. Um, but I'll have a breakdown as soon as I get the final numbers for you to look at that project. But we are within right now 3% of the budget considering we signed the contract uh, back in March of 2001 or 2021. So we're still trending fairly well on that. Uh, also in the government center, uh, due to um, our hard time trying to get uh, janitorial staff keeping on that, we moved the uh, government center to contract cleaning um, and kept one uh, full-time FTE to clean the jail and the recycling center. So we're contract cleaning with the same company that we use over at Highway and the other uh, parts of the facilities. Um, right now with the programs out there, the service transportation program, 
I am completing the uh, applications for the Apple River Bridge. That'll be 100% funded for construction design. I have um, the County Road B, County Road B, County Road E, and County Road T I'm putting in also for funding. Um, those applications are due this 27th of this month. So that'll go uh, here shortly. Uh, the packet I handed out, um, the first section is um, actually the plan that uh, Eric Wojcik from Oz Division puts together on the clams. And you can see the size of the flowage in the key areas they're um, keyed in on right now on the second page um, where they're looking. And then it shows a couple pictures um, of the clams we're getting out of the flowage and the size, you know, some smaller ones, about two inches, three inches. As you get a little further down there, you'll see one, one other species that was found. And it's a giant something or another. I can't remember the <laughs> for it, but um, you can see how big that one is. That one's almost eight inches, that, that, that clam right there on there. Um, and then another picture of the clams. Uh, the, the next page on there, the highway maintenance allocation came from the state on there. That's this page right here. I want to point this out because um, in the budget that the governor passed, he did do, he did give an increase to uh, RMA maintenance or routine maintenance agreements with the counties. The first column here that says the LOS uh, model generation, that's the level of service model that the state has that they run that say, what kind of funding would it take to maintain the state systems? And what you see is there, that number is $2,094,600. The raise that the, the state gave, the governor gave the state, they're keeping that money to replenish their winter severity fund because of a tough winter. So our funding for next year will be flat again at uh, $1.3 million. So right off the bat, off the own state model, we are 30% underfunded on maintaining their own system under contract. So when communities ask on how, um, why this road's not getting paved or the state highway is not getting paved or maintained, you know, you know, that's the funding levels we're at right now. And subsequently I attached there the letter from the Bureau um, from David Zertz, uh, the Bureau Maintenance Director, that, that states that why they did that with the process, so you can understand why um, that funding level is at that um, level with that, you see there. Um, the, other, the other thing I added there, um, kind of the second to last page is the um, real, the SAP amendments uh, that comes out, you know, they ask for amendments on state projects. This is state funds now. Um, and the project I have highlighted at the bottom is the 243 project, which ties into the bridge project they're replacing in 26, 27. Um, and originally just to help the state portion of that to do the uh, 243, the slopes and the bluffs was estimated at four to $5 million. The new estimate on that is now 17 million to $20 million. So, you know, that's a large, it's a large increase uh, for that project, but just to see how um, things are going up and estimating going on there. Um, the only other two things I have is October 17th at, uh, is our highway maintenance training day for winter maintenance. We got guys going through a rodeo and course and training. Uh, we are having a potluck that day uh, at Public Works, so you guys are invited all to that. Uh, at noon. October 17th. October 17th. And just a reminder, October 24th is the committee member meeting, the commissioner meeting at the Barron County Highway Shop at 9.30. October 24th? Yes. What is that, what's the date of the both of these? Uh, October 17th for the potluck and October 24th for the committee meeting. What are the times again on that for the 17th? No. Uh, the 17th would be at noon. We try to eat, eat at noon. And then um, the training is all day. And then the 24th is 930. <clears throat> um, well, it was yesterday morning, I got two calls uh, asking when the uh, uh, Apple River Bridge North or, or uh, West Adirondo would be open. That had 45 working days currently. 
um, still left 40 days. Um, or probably maybe five weeks out. December 1st? Hopefully before that. Should be before that. Yeah. The company has other bridges they're completing right now, and their intent is to bring in a second crew to help move that project along at a quicker pace. I drove down there the other day to see what it looked like. So sometime in November. Sometime in November. Yeah. I don't have an exact, I'll get you an exact date of what they did. Uh, you know, the, the big rain that changed it. You know, I think everybody's aware of that. That's all I have. Any questions for Mo? No. Report. Sheriff is done, so then we go to Supervisor Rowdy. Yes. <clears throat> um, in the discussion today, I guess the biggest thing I found out of it is I've been involved in this for, well, with the club for as long as I've been a supervisor, but in this committee and everyone working together, I think it's hard to understand the complexities of work, the two groups working together. And you see that in how wonderful it's going. I say that every month, but just listening today, it was they, they, they've got this issue to deal with, they got this issue to deal with, they got the towns to deal with, they got the villages to deal with. It, it just, there's a lot involved in keeping up all these ATV, UTVs, and snowmobile issues. So I just wanted to bring that out. It was another great day, and just seeing everybody work together is just, that's what I found finds is fantastic. I think just the work they do on the signage and, you yes. know, and having everything, you know, they're so conscious that everything is right in the signing program, so there isn't any mishaps or fatalities. And there's a lot of discussion back and forth with Rob in the signage and getting it done correctly, like you say. And it's just, it, it just, it's a immense program, all of it that they're dealing with. I expected they would uh, get together and work well uh, on the onset of this because of the characters that, the characteristics of the characters. Yeah, that's true. That you, uh, that you deal with, they are uh, very dedicated people. They are in a lot and of volunteer work. Anything they have to take over. Absolutely. ATVs fit in real well. Yeah, they manage the volunteer work so well. Yeah, amazing. They do. There was a discussion today about MOUs with the Stower and the Andy Dancer. And Part of that was put on hold because of the lawsuit and yeah. just got to see where it's going to go in the near future. Right. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, any questions? No. Well, you need an update from CJCC? Sir, I can provide that. Uh, Big news is that the CJCC coordinator has an addition to her family uh, oh. as of Sunday afternoon. She got uh, her done. Fred <laughs> Neil Stillen, beautiful little baby boy, was born. So Melissa's uh, going to be on uh, FMLA for a few weeks. Um, in terms of the program report, we've got a total of 15 in diversion programs right now. So the balance is a little lighter toward diversion. And the sheriff a few minutes ago mentioned that there's a getting back to sort of historical norms in terms of census in the jail. But we've got two in meth diversion, four in IDIP, which is the intoxicated driver program, and nine in treatment court, uh, nine in first time offender right now. So that's what's going on with CJCC. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No questions? When's the next graduation schedule? Uh, unclear exactly, sir, but we're thinking uh, mid-January. Melissa gets back first week of January, so we got to wait till then. I think that's what she said at the last meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, number 11, discussion and possible action regarding support and implementation of the county board 
priorities. I asked that this get put on there, uh, just like I talked about last month. You know, what can the committee do to improve our goal standard as far as highway conditions are concerned? So I, I took talked to Mo and I said, in a perfect world, if you had a million dollars, where would you put it? Okay. And he indicated, well, County Road E out in McKinley. So I went out and drove it <clears throat> and uh, agreed, of course, with him that, you know, that would be a good place. So, you know, I'm not sure of the procedure, but we're in a situation where we have excess money at this time. It would seem like a perfect time to work on our goal. So... You know, I'm looking to the commit this committee to talk about it, figure it out. I mean, are we willing to take a million dollars of our excess and work on that goal? Priority. Yeah. It's a long We're, run up there. It's a long ways up there, yeah. You know, but it's a it's a road that gets used a lot for cut across. Right. It's got the large and lake and everything on yeah. in there, a lot of a lot of use. Uh hmm. You know, if we just sit here and watch, you know, when I had the job and Mo's got the job, we know we're not going to make it. We're not going to get the quality of roads that we want. We're going to run out of money long before we get there. So, you know, what do we do to increase the quality of that goal we have? It's obviously we've got to spend money. So we, you know, we would need to direct somebody to look into can we do that or not. So is that one of our lowest paid rating roads? E up yeah. there? Yeah, E's it's you know, I don't it's know what the bad. rating current rating is, but it's it's, it's in rough shape. It has been for some time. Yeah, it's in rough shape. Just so one comment, Steve, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just we heard Mo's talk. And you look at this economy. And it gets a little, I think it gets a little scary to I understand we want to do our goals. I'm not against that. That's why we're here. It's that he just showed how much that one project would increase just on just one. And, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to happen in this near future on this, this world is a little scary with Biden there. I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I, I hate to jump into too much and then, then it goes <clears> the other way. I just I just wanted to give you that. Yeah, no, you know, I understand. It's a it's a million two hundred thousand dollars or yeah, million one about to do that road. It's five miles. Yes, under five, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's big. It's big money. Forty eight heading north or it's forty eight to W. Pardon. Forty eight to County W. Yeah. Yeah. But forty to W. Well, not all the way up. No, not all the way. No. You know, I just thought it's it's my as the chair of the committee. I need to introduce this idea to the committee so we can be thinking about it. Now, whether we think about it and and uh, make a decision, or if we just think about it when the budget's going through and we can see that we can do something. We're in a year where we got record sales tax collections. We got. $5.5 million excess left over. Uh, you know, I don't know that we could find a better time to do something toward that goal. So uh, that's why I asked for it to be put on here so we can at least start thinking about what are we going to do to improve it. Yeah, clarify the 5.5 million. If, if we have that surplus, then we have about 2.7. Yes. Um, and you know, options would be yes, we could use some of that surplus, which we will consider that for some of our capital improvement efforts that that we've got in the budget uh, for you guys to, to decide on. Um, another option would be financing, bonding for us. Uh, we did talk about if we use some of that surplus for capital improvements this year 
instead of using the bonding that it, it because the things we have this year for capital improvements are not the big things like redoing the government center, right? A lot of small, I won't say nickel and dime, but 100,000 here, 100,000 there. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I haven't talked to my finance director, but that might be a kind of a project, if not this year, that next year to look at financing for. Um, well, after reading this, we're in good shape that way, as far as being able to borrow money. To fund, yes. Yes, so as long as the, con uh, the concept stays open-minded, yeah. it doesn't get thrown out the window so that we don't do anything about our goal. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I just wanted it on there so that we could open this window and call her out of it. If yeah. wanted to see what. Hey, John. Uh, on the sale of tax, it came out on the Twin City Media last night, and there was an article in the St. Paul paper today that uh, the sales tax all of a sudden it's really higher than what they're. Even their projected raise was the how does it look in our county? Have you seen any with the, with the kind county. of spike lately? Well, I don't know if you'd see a spike. We have been running ahead of last year, which is good. We were, I think, we're up six point six percent. That's the last number I think I saw this morning. Over last year. Over last year, but as of a month ago, we were eight and a half percent over. So. You, you can't look at it month to month because if you do, you'll overreact, right? You'll you'll have a knee-jerk reaction to one month. And that's what this was. Yeah, and this one month, we went down a little bit. Now, as we've been saying all along, we feel very good about sales tax and we keep projecting more into our budget to, to make it reflect what we think is more accurate instead of having it as a something that we underestimate so that we have some money to make sure that we come in on budget. Um, but we are getting closer. It's just like when you spend your money and, and you plan on how much money you're going to make. If you were in a business and you have so much money coming in, you can project how much you think you're going to make, but you also have to project when there's going to be that downturn. And so we are getting to the point where Yes, we've been growing very nicely, and I'm, I'm probably the more optimistic one of the bunch up there, and I think it's going to keep going for another year or two. Some of the finance people say, ah, you know, with the economy, we've had a great run. You're going to start seeing it. Slow down. <clears throat> we don't know, right? That's I don't have the crystal ball. But I, I do think now, I like the idea for major projects if we can finance something because we really should keep our debt payment flat, right? And we can use that effectively and strategically. So it might make sense to borrow some money for a significant project. Mo does a great job when he prepares his budget of saying, here are the priorities we have immediately near-term and long-term. So, um, and he's done that. And so now if we want to add one, you know, I, I would... I would say you're right. Let Mo and some of the people say, you know, if Mo says, hey, that's our next big project, we can consider that. And the question might be timing. Now, next year, I, I caution people because it's my job that when you have money sitting in front of you now, it's easy to say, let's spend it. We got this money, let's spend it. What I really encourage is to, to give it a longer term planning perspective, right? Because what's important to you today or any of us, next year we may say, ooh, cripes, I wish I hadn't spent that money then because now we really need it. So I, I that's where I encourage people to think longer term. You sound like a real optimist set. <laughs> that worries a lot. Well, every committee does the same thing, yeah. right? They come in and they go, how can we spend the money now? We want to spend some money. And I don't know what it is, but there's that urge when it's in front of you. When I get it in my pocket, yeah. I go downtown. I want to spend it. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm just the guy that always yeah. taps on the brakes. I understand. And, you know, all I'm saying is we got the, we got the time put into the 
goals. Mm -hmm. What can we do to to it's a great you know, and I asked the sheriff, I said, is there anything, you know, that you, you could have in your hands for better drug enforcement? He says, No, I think we have all the tools we need, and I appreciate his honest answer. But so good. Yep. And to go along with that, it, you folks remember when I came back from <coughs> from the uh, uh, Wisconsin County last spring, the attorney general's budget director, he said, hey, now there's going to be no more, you know, uh, funds from, you know, the federal. And he had the figures how much they had put into it. So he said, that's going to be things you're going to have to make up. And uh, now when I was down there last week, they didn't know, they knew that there was this strike coming. And as we heard both say, when you're getting the same, and, and that's just, just going to be the trend now, and the, the strike is going to make it worse. But I just got to relay what I heard from, he emphatically warned all the counties that just watch what's going to happen. Uh, hang on to your tight budgets. Really, in that. Right. And not to say that might be something that the, the supervisors at the board meeting in October say, we want to consider this. If somebody may make that proposal. You can certainly do that. Uh, and I'm glad you brought it up because we'll start thinking about it. And, you know, we have to look at it. Is that the wisest thing now? Is or are there other priorities <clears throat> that might take a precedence? Well, I appreciate your, you know, if we're going to do something, bonding is, I think we're going to be looking at some bonding. Now is not a bad time to be looking at bonding <clears throat> because there is going to be a big change in bonding interest rates. Up or down. But a year from now, I don't know. On sitting back there, I, I some say that now is you know where it's going to kind of peak. We, we may have plateaued on the interest rate, so are we better borrowing this year or next year? You know, no guarantee for anything. True. Okay. Well, that was my well part to bring it forward and for us to think about it. I think it's something they should talk, talk, talk about it. I think it should be on the next month's agenda, Mr. Chair. On the agenda for next month. Good idea. On the agenda for this meeting? Yeah. Uh, you can just carry it see on. See what then. the okay. progress, if any, may be. Okay. Okay, we're at annual budget review. Good afternoon. Oh, happy. Well, I have lots of pretty pictures. They just happen to look like numbers. Oh. <laughs> I'll try to paint some pictures with the numbers. They're going to sound remarkably like what you've already heard from the highway commissioner and the sheriff, I think. Uh, so what we're looking at in this document, you're going to get another one uh, with the blue at the top is the run through the middle of the year, 630. So this is kind of what we do in finance when we're thinking about where we stand this year to budget and where we stand this year to last year. So this, this report helps us understand that, helps our department and division uh, directors understand it as well. So you've got on the four pages here, you've got highway and then parks and then facilities, we call it now. And then you've got the sheriff. So let me draw your attention to some interesting items. And as I mentioned, I think these will reinforce some of the things you're hearing. Um, on that first page, highway, Mo, feel free to chime in if you'd like. What, what do we in finance look for? You know, we don't necessarily know what it's like to plow a highway or to uh, grind up a road. But we can see when expenses for supplies are higher in one period to the next. So if you look, uh, I guess it's the fourth line down on expenses for 23 actual versus 22 actual. 
you'll see that uh, the number for supplies is considerably more. And what's happening is that's uh, contributing to the fact that we're a little heavy with expense through the half year, go all the way to the bottom, a little heavy on expense this year versus last. So we're spending, we spent more in supplies through this first half of the year in 23 than we did in 22. Right, yeah, and, and some of that, I'll, I'll speak just to, to the highway budget on this one, uh, not the facilities budget or the parks budget on this one. Um, a lot of a lot of times, um, these are run off the general ledger um, with that. Um, and with, on the highway side, that number there is gonna be fluctuating because of when our projects are scheduled. We have a year that the projects are scheduled early. You're gonna see a lot of expense in that line. If our, if our projects I can't get paved till uh, August, September, we're gonna have a heavy flow of supplies at that time. So a lot of that number is programmed off of um, when we're doing the projects. So. so that's the kind of question we might ask if we're seeing that kind of difference year to year, ask Mo that. That's kind of explanation that helps us feel better about where we are and not so bad about running a little heavy at the half halfway point. And then uh, I'm gonna just, unless there's questions about uh, parks or buildings, so I'll move over to the sheriffs now, which is the last page. And, uh, you know, the sheriff mentioned that it's more expensive to run his department last well he's right and one of the big reasons is we're spending more on personnel so that would be the first line on expense about a third of the way down it's marked with an a on your paper yeah so when we're planning for 24 and we're seeing that kind of incremental increase we'll have a conversation with don burroughs about is that kind of a one-off unlikely or is it something we need to plan for in 24? And that's what we're doing right now. In fact, hopefully today is a day when we sort of throw the lever and run all the expenses for the projected budget for 24. And uh, all that good work will show us whether we're about where we thought we'd be, a little light or a little heavy. We're probably not gonna be a little heavy, but- uh, <clears throat> This personnel expenses uh, services, uh, that's, Two full-time deputies light. Right. So, you, well, over the course of the year, we got up and down. Right now, we're more full than we have been. But we've also had more overtime expense. Now, the, the chief deputy could comment on that to the nth degree, I'm sure. But yes. Is this approximately what we expect if we had full staff and overtime? Yes, we had some issues with the staffing plan where our numbers were just a little skewed, so we readjusted those. So next year's numbers for like wages will increase for the patrol deputies. Okay. Just the, the line number increased just because their number was off. And then since we've been short staffed, we've been spending a lot more money on overtime filling those short shifts. Gotcha. Yep. So uh are there any questions about where we stand at the half year mark? And we'll run this uh, again in a couple of months. It'll show us the three quarter year mark. And at that point, we're pretty much done with the spending because we'll be in December. We got to make a decision before then though. We sure do. <laughs> we sure do. And the administrator will present you with his view on the budget on the 17th. So um, I have end of year reports. If you'd like to look at them for the same departments, um, and what we do with these is we look mostly at whether we hit budget or not. You've already heard the punchline on these, really, because you've heard the audit report. We had a, a year where we ended up with a surplus. And so there's not particularly anything concerning to me here. And the numbers are in the books. But uh, if, if there are questions about how we ended up uh, in 2022, I'd be ha happy to answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll... Think about it and come back to you. But uh, we're just to kind of segue into budget year 24. Um, we are in the very last phases right now of understanding expenses. And one of the things that we're working with is the information from our wage study consultants. So all that data is back to us for our consideration. Uh, and from what we can tell, they've done a, done a nice job and the administrator's budget will have 
sort of a snapshot of what we can expect in terms of additional employee related expense, um, except for the union contract for 2024, based on that wage study. On the second half here, is, a, is the highway department the only really non-lapsing? Well, we have the health fund. Is that what you mean by, not, and we, we also have carryover. Carryover. So as an example, if you look at, at parks and also at facilities, you'd see there was a carryover in 22 to 23. Uh, in, the, in the buildings, recycling, it was money allocated for recycling that hasn't been spent yet. Uh, and there's Clamp Falls Dam where we got the allocation from uh, this. We booked the allocation from the state. We hadn't actually received it yet, that two million bucks. So we do have, we do carry over funds to uh, continue or complete projects where the budgeting was done in one year and it's not actually executed to the second. So at, at what stage of that project do you anticipate the two million from the state legislature? Mo, I, my understanding is we, we bill after completion of the work. Am I right on that? Really? We wouldn't get no money till it's everything is. There's a potential to draw off it earlier on it at different stages, but at, at this time, um, usually it's a reimbursement. Hmm. That was appropriated in their 22 budget? Right, and is it, it, it is encumbered for us. Um, there are certain deadlines we have to meet to make sure that um, we, we keep that money secured. And we're on track on that. Yes, we are. Yep. On track with that. Thank you. Any questions? Not from me. Only mud, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you left us there. Let me know if I can clarify. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? No. No. Thank you. I guess the work plan should probably be the same. Any subject matters? I guess we're going to carry over this conversation about our goals. Hopefully. See where our administrator and highway commissioner come up with something for us. Yep. Yep. So, Is there a. Yeah. Yep. Question of it, uh, I think at the last meeting you said they had offered this zoning administrator to somebody and they kind of felt that they kind of used this, they stayed where they are. Is there any news on well, the zoning administrator? Yeah. Uh, we continue to look um, with Bob's departure. You know, I look at this as an opportunity to uh, catch the eyes of more people because Bob's job will be, I think, more heavily sought after. I think that's going to be a, would be a, a good job for a lot of people. It's a senior management position. So we may get people who are from zoning departments and have a, some type of background in either environmental science or zoning, and they may know of people as well. Uh, but we do not have, I think we, you know, I haven't checked since I've been back from my long weekend if, if we had any application. Uh, we do have MSA, that consultant is working for CUPs and BOAs and those types of things. Um, and, you know, I met today with the zoning staff. We're talking through how we're going to handle when major questions and issues come up. Uh, but I can't say we have anybody in pocket yet. So we don't have the luxury of having either those two open positions. We don't have the luxury of in-house applications like we do. Well, we your, didn't have any your... for the zoning administrator from in-house. Uh, we just posted the environmental services director. So I'll be curious to see if anybody is interested in that and qualified for that. Okay. But I, I, I will say this, we've had some communications with some people where they're like, Hmm, I'm interested, you know? So we'll just wait and see if they do the application. Yes. Asking questions for some constituents. Yeah, yeah, I know it's it's a it's a high vi highly visible position. It's it's very customer centric. 
we've got good staff in there and, and they know now they have to step it up a little bit uh, and we're going to push them. They're going to stretch, uh, but we'll get somebody in there as soon as possible. Our contractor friends are always pretty sensitive to that. Right. <laughs> Good choice of words, John. Sensitive. Yeah, I was going to say sensitive. Is just, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Anything else? No. I move for adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Sensitive.